ignited, or lust becomes ignited, and then he gives a dissertation that lust is the all-devouring, sinful enemy of the world. So then by intelligence, by sharpened intelligence and emotional service and by analysis, you should understand, I should stay free from what I'm doing. And I should try to keep myself situated. But sometimes, you know, sometimes mistakes will happen. You see, we may call the wrong shot. We may do the wrong thing, you know. And then Krishna arranges that we have sadhus. You know, we have, we have, you know, kind and loving, caring souls that we can sit with and that we can talk to and we can, you know, we can hear from them and we can, you know, then intelligence will become tuned. Yeah. Remember one time I was in a situation where, uh, like I felt, like I felt, you know, a lot of injustice had gone on, you know, in particularly pertaining to the situation that I was in. And I felt like I had sort of taken the hard rap, but there was a, like a lot of injustice with a lot of people involved, you know. And, uh, and I was quite perturbed, sort of distressed and depressed over the situation. And then one of my god brothers, you know, a real good friend and, you know, a real caring fellow, you know, we sat down and we started talking and I started to feel like, you know, airing my grievances. And he started saying, yeah, I can sort of agree with you, you know, a lot of problems have gone on and this and that and the other. And I walked away from that conversation feeling pretty good that somebody understood me. And then he said, uh, could, could we speak again tomorrow? And I said, yeah, great, I'd love to. So then the next time I went back to speak to him, he said, well, our conversation sort of went in a particular direction yesterday, didn't it? And I went, yeah. And he said, were you satisfied with that? And I went, yeah. And he said, but now comes the real question. Despite the fact that it appears that some injustice has been done, you know, who is the real cause behind things? Is it just this person or that person or the other person? Or do we really believe in the philosophy that not a blade of grass moves without the will of the Lord? And perhaps the Lord is really behind things. And therefore we should see the Lord in every circumstance and we should have the rest of the determination to surrender to the Lord and accept, you, and, and accept the Lord's will. He says, so what will your choice be? Are you going to remain sort of like on the mental plane about it? Are you just going to accept the will of the Lord that you should change and then, you know. And then when I saw the Lord perspective in it, then it was sort of like the light really came on. You know. Or you have that situation that <clears throat> situation in Bhagavatam. Who is that uh, Maharaj Chitraketu? And he was the king of the world. And he was flying around on his airplane one time, or his carrier. And he went to Kailash. You, you know that story? And he reached Kailash. And he saw, and Kailash is real beautiful. Prabhupada says Kailash is but just about as beautiful as Goloka Vrindavan. You know, very transcendental place. And he saw this huge banyan tree. And then sitting beneath the banyan tree was Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva, because he was in his yogi mood, he was naked. And then Parvati Devi, or Durga Devi, she was there. And she was sitting very comfortably, you know, on the lap of Shiva with her arms around Shiva, 